Hey everyone, so welcome back and Happy New Year or Happy Christmas. Um, hoping to release this video after New Year's, so Happy New Year. Um, so the number one question that I get asked on a very regular basis, well there's two questions. First question is when are you leaving? And the second question is how much does this whole thing cost? Now when are we leaving? No idea. But I can tell you how much it has cost because I've tracked it from pretty much day one. Now most would call me an absolute nerd for tracking that, and they're right to be honest. But what it does let me do is tell you guys what it actually has cost piece by piece. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the very start, which was February 2018, from the cost of the hull, and then I'm going to go from there. Now obviously there were costs before that, um, before I took ownership of the boat, and they were minimal. I mean the boat was bought for scrap value. So the scrap value of steel in 2012 was probably 50 euros or something like that for a ton. Um, so she was bought for about about four or 500 euros. And then she was worked on um, new steel on the decks and things like that, uh, sandblasted and painted and stuff. I don't know the cost of all that. So what I'm taking is the cost of a freshly um, sandblasted and freshly painted hull. Um, which, which is how I got the boat. I wasn't sure if I was going to make this video originally and kind of thought, you know, the cost of this is kind of my business, but I think that this might help people. Um, I'm more concerned about people not going into a project and not having something to base it off. Um, there are hundreds of different ways to do what I'm doing, but the way I did it is I bought the bear hull and I went from there. So I got the bear hull, um, I got the engine so the engine was a second hand solid diesel engine and I got the mast and I got really good sails um, and I got a few kind of bits and bobs as well but they were the main bits that I got and I paid a grand total of actually before I tell you would you do me a favor pause the video after what I say this thing pause the video and comment how much you think that the whole cost with the sails with the rig um, all the bits that you saw from day one that I had, comment how much you cost, thought that cost, and then comment how much you think that the, the fit out inside has cost. I'm not going to include the, the marina fees and I'm not including things like that because they're kind of things I would have had to pay anyway. So just include materials, a bit of labor here and there, um, the timber that we've used and things like that. I'm also not including my time because that would just be ridiculous. Um, so pause the video comment those things down below right now and see how it matches up with what the actual uh, cost was. It really helped me actually because I'm really curious about what people think it would cost. Right, so you've done that and hopefully you've subscribed as well by the way. And we're going to talk about the hull. So the hull, engine, rig um, and a few bits and bobs, 8,000 euro. So I got that for eight grand. Now that might sound like a lot of money and it, it is, it kind of cleaned me out at the time, but if you think about the cost of a kit to buy the steel pre-cut from Bruce Roberts or the likes of those or um, Vanderstadt, you'd be paying anything from for this size of boat, anything from 35 grand up to 50 grand. So like eight grand for a pretty decent hull. I mean, she was immaculate and the engine, which was very good and a mast and extremely good sales. I mean, sales are worth alone or are worth about 10 grand for the two sales that I have. I priced those up two heavy cruising sails, at least 10 grand, at least. So hopefully that hasn't already blown everyone's mind. Um, I don't think it was that much, um, but anyway, we'll move on from there. So the likes of before we got the boat um, onto the water, that's what I want to talk about next. The cost of the eight months that I spent um, fitting new rigging, we, f we painted the boat and we did a huge amount of miscellaneous jobs, which ended up costing a lot of more, more than I expected. Like bits for the engine, like an alternator, starter motor, things like that. Just insanely expensive. So we'll break, we'll break it down from there and we'll, we'll, we'll start talking about that. So, right, for the engine, I got a starter motor. One of the first things I bought was a starter motor and an alternator. Um, and the, the associated kind of tubing and things like that. And I paid roughly five to 600 euros for all those bits. So I had to get new water pump, um, impeller and do an oil change and do all the oil bits. So the starter motor and alternator alone were 200 each. So already 400 euros straight off the bat. And the engine wasn't even running at that stage. Um, so that's when I kind of went, uh oh, <laughs> there were also other miscellaneous engine parts and stuff. So it was around, around between, it was six, 700 euro. 
And then we went on to the drivetrain, so the, the shaft was already in the boat, which was a huge cost saved. But then I had to change the dripless bearing, and I had to change, I had to get the propeller service because the propeller was in really bad shape. Um, it was a feathering prop worth a few thousand, but I got that for free with the boat too, actually. Forgot about that. Um, and I paid 500 to have the propeller serviced, and I paid another 200 for parts for the, the, um, the stripless bearing. So yeah, from there I ended. I had to buy the likes of warp and fenders. I paid three fifty for those. Um, I had to get a few bits and bobs for like the winches. The winches I paid a hundred each for those. They were really cheap because they weren't working, and I had to restore them. And I spent another twenty or thirty on parts to get them working. Those winches new were about three for three grand each. Um, bought things like mast headlights, seacox, uh, which I haven't fitted yet. Seacox um, were three hundred and fifty for the plastic ones. Silly things like bearings for the binnacles, um, swaged ends for the guard lines were 200. UV sealant, I spent 300 euro on sealant to do the windows. Um, I spent another grand on miscellaneous things like nuts, bolts, all stainless stuff. Um, things just to get the boat kind of set up to go sailing. Uh, a bit of cabling here and there was, I spent another two or 300 euro on just cabling to run up the mast. So I'm not gonna go through every single thing here. I don't see the point. I'm not going to go through every item because we will we will be here all day. Um, we're going to just go and tell. I'm just going to go and tell you how much I spent on miscellaneous kind of items like that. Get the boat to get the boat in the water. Um, we paid, including launching, which was a thousand euro. We paid nine grand uh, over the course of eight months, and that was at this stage my savings were looking really. Shh. And that's not even to mention the paint. So we ended up paying. Um, nearly just over two grand for the paint. I mean, a, a five litre drum of the Joe's Mastic primer is a hundred euro. Um, I paid another 1600 euro for all the paint for the color, color and more primer. Um, things like paint brushes and all these different things, they really add up. Anti-fouling, um, wood paint, everything that we've used, every bit of paint we've used has been 2,200 euro. Um, so that was on top of nine grand that we paid on miscellaneous items and things like that. So already we're looking here at 11 to 12 grand and the boat wasn't even in the water yet. Well, it was at that stage. It was in the water, but we hadn't sailed it, hadn't moved the boat. Um, so hopefully you're keeping track. I'm trying to make sense of all this myself and it's kind of depressing to see all this money that's been spent. So quick recap, hull was 8,000. Paid another roughly nine grand on miscellaneous items. There's some other stuff lumped in there as well, which I'll break out a little bit later. Um, another two grand, just over two grand on paint. And that was just to get the boat in the water. And then obviously the boat had to be rigged because we had no actual solid safe rigging to go on the boat. Oh God, this was really painful. I, I didn't, it, I always knew how expensive rigging was gonna be, but I didn't really think, holy, shit, this is gonna be expensive. Um, but I ended up paying, so just to get the cap shrouds, the intermediate shrouds, the backstay, the new uh, running backstays, a few separate diffs, like blocks and kind of blocks and things like that. Um, the new main halyard, new Genoa halyard, topping lift, all these kind of things, winch pads for the mast, uh, new sheets for the Genoa, um, things like that. And I still haven't done the forestay or the inner forestay or the lower shrouds. So there's still rigging to be done. And We've spent so far a grand total of four grand on that stuff. Now, I managed to get a really good deal on the halyards. I got Vectran halyards and I got Vectran, um, or I got braid on braid, Genoa sheath, and I got really good furling line and stuff like that. But I actually only paid just over a grand for all that stuff. And that was a huge amount of money worth of stuff. I got it off a guy who was shutting down a, um, an old uh, chandlery and he had all this specialist stuff that he was getting, trying to get rid of for cheap. So I paid nothing for this stuff. Like I've still got some of it left and it's just such good stuff. I um, mean, Vectran, you could lift the boat on a strand, on a, on a, on a, one of my halyards, you could lift 12 tons. So that's the boat launched. The boat was in the water. Um, a lot of the mis miscellaneous stuff I was buying over time to put into the garage, into the shed, stuff you haven't even seen yet. Um, things like diesel heaters and stuff like that we'll talk about next. But yeah, so we paid eight grand for the hull, nine grand for miscellaneous bits and bobs to get the boat um, into the water. And then paint and painted was another two grand. And then rigging was another four grand. So we're looking at eight, 90 or eight, 17, 19, 
23 grand straight off boat wasn't boat was launched at that stage and on this stage i was thinking crap i have a shell that's cost me 23 grand but what i hadn't thought of was all of the experience that i gained and i had actually got a really well set up boat it just hadn't got an interior which sounds crazy but a lot of that cost was actually wasn't too bad um we had a decent decent sales decent rigging running rigging was all new um the steering system was all new like all the cabling and the new but new bearings and the binnacle i got the helm wheel with the boat as well they're worth a fortune um so actually the boat was really well set up at that stage the deck hadn't been painted or anything like that and we haven't got any real ancillaries fitted but i had most of the stuff that i needed by then another thing i saved a lot of money on was the dinghy i paid 400 euro for a really good avon dinghy second hand that would never been used and I got the engine for free off Simon. Um, he gave it to me because it was missing parts. And I paid, I think, 150 euro for a new carburetor and parts and made it run. So another huge saving there. Um, so I've been saving, kind of saving in some places and spending in others. But the places that I've been spending, I've been spending it on good, good stuff. Um, and trying to buy the best of the best for the, for the deck, sales, rigging, things like that. So the next um, kind of expense, one of the main expenses, um, has been timber. Now I actually haven't spent very much money on timber. I spent like I spent just over two grand on plywood. Um, a lot of that ply was plywood expensive so that's probably only 20 sheets of ply. Um, so like the likes of the cabin sole and a lot of the cabinetry is formed with plywood and then covered, covered in hardwood or softwood. So Massive amounts of plywood. I just never experienced, I never thought that that much plywood would need to go in here, and I'd never really planned on using plywood. Um, but then we spent only 600 euro on Iroko, because a lot of the Iroko I had, um, the hardwood we have, is um, reclaimed from an old nurse, from an old um, nunnery. That nunnery, actually, someone was wondering, asking me why that nunnery was knocked. It wasn't knocked down, actually. The, all of the um, furniture was broken up because it was rotten and all the good stuff was given to me, and then it was repurposed as an old folks home, so the, the building is still there. Um, two or three hundred years old, and the Aroka was probably put in there over well over a hundred years old uh, ago. So yeah, um, we spent 600 on Aroka, then pine kind of battens were 300, different tongue groove um, was another 350, so all the tongue groove you see in the saloon and anywhere like that um, is quite expensive for a pack. It's like 25 euro a pack, and we used probably 15, to 20 packs um, and then we spent another 400 on plywood iroko faced plywood so yeah that wasn't cheap either but we actually have a huge amount of the timber that we need now it's in storage um, we also have a huge amount of the ancillaries like cooker all the electrical stuff i need well most of the electrical stuff i need um, is already bought and in the shed so we'll go through that stuff next as well so how much does that bring us up to so we have Eight grand for the hull, nine grand for miscellaneous bits and bobs, so that's 17. Paint, another two, that's 19. And then rigging, another four, so around 23. And then we get on to wood, so another four grand, that's 27 grand. And then we get on to the insulation. Now, the insulation was, I was kind of touching between using the boards of insulation that you push into the... Into the uh, into the gaps between the um, the ceiling and the hull sides. Now, I wasn't completely gone on that. Um, it allows a lot of condensation to build up, and yes, there's an argument that it allows it to run down into the bilge, but I'd rather just spray foam it and not worry about condensation at all. Um, some say that it causes rust behind, which is probably true in the case where you haven't got a properly prepared surface, but we were extremely particular about getting that right. Um, so yeah, that was, there was no issues there. So the spray foaming job costs me 1300 euro and that was a full day of work for the lads. Um, they really did me a solid on that one and I really appreciate it. It completely transformed the boat. I mean, the boat went from being a shell, a very cold shell, to a pretty warm, almost homely place to be. Um, and it just, it just made tearing into the paneling and things like that a hell of a lot more kind of rewarding because you could just put the panels on and not worry about having to do any insulation. There were some cases where I had to shave it back, um, but that's okay. I don't mind doing that. One thing I didn't mention earlier as well, and something I forgot to talk about was the sails. <clears throat> so yeah, I got sails in ex excellent condition, 
but they had to have a little bit of work done to them. Um, the Genoa had to have a new UV strip and that was 600 and I had to have the sail covers for the main um, repaired and a piece made so that was another 400. So there was nearly a thousand euro on just getting sail work done. Um, but the sails are in excellent condition, there's no more work to be done to them. Um, except maybe having a new one made for the inner force day, which would be very wise. So I'll probably end up doing that. But yeah, for now, sales are pretty much um, a closed book. The next thing I bought was a diesel heating system. We haven't actually looked at that yet, <clears throat> but um, I'm hoping to fit that over the next few weeks. I'm hoping to. I'm definitely going to get the wiring in soon anyway, because the wiring isn't too big a deal. Um, and I do have a location that I want to put the heater. So I'm probably just going to get that thrown in over the next few weeks if I can. Um, I want to do it right because it's quite a dangerous, it could be quite dangerous if they go wrong. I bought a, it's a Planar diesel heater. Um, it's not one of the Chinese ones that you see called Planar. It was a, an actual Russian Planar sold as autotherm in the UK um, heater and they were 800. Um, the ones online I think are 150 but I wouldn't recommend those for a boat. And the Urba Spashes are over three or four grand and I just wasn't going to pay that for a diesel heater. It just didn't make any sense to me. Um, so yeah, that's the heating. Now onto the electrics. Now I'm not completely finished the electrics yet. Um, I still have some kind of cabling to buy. Um, and I still have a battery charger to buy <clears throat> and I still have batteries to buy. So I've only spent money on the spotlights, um, which were 130 euros for different lights that I've got cabling. So I got a lot of 1.5 mil squared cabling to run all the lights. So that was another 115 just for the roll. Um, charge controller was 150, the inverter was 200, the battery monitor was 200 and other bits of cabling for like the batteries and bits and bobs were another 200. So I have a thousand euro on electrics and I'm not even probably halfway through it. Um, the lithium batteries that I'm looking at will probably triple that price um, or triple the cost because yeah, I think lithium is the way to go, but we'll talk about that in another video. Um, but that's what I've spent so far on electrics. Now it sounds funny to talk about plumbing, but because I haven't done any plumbing yet, but um, <clears throat> I've also bought a lot of things that I need for plumbing. So it's the likes of a sink, tap, pumps, accumulator, tanks, things like that. I've spent 400 euro on and I still have to buy all like the PEX fittings and the PEX, PEX um, piping. And I need to either repurpose the chlorifier that I have or buy a new one and they're quite expensive. So I'm hoping that I can repair the one I have. Um, so yeah, I've only spent 400 on plumbing, but there's still a lot to come there. And yeah, that's, that's another, another cost. <laughs> and the final cost, um, I've spent a couple of grand paying different people to do different jobs. Um, a few welding jobs here and there and things like that. Um, paid, I've paid three and a half grand on that, but I'm not going to go into the specifics of that. Um, but some ask, cause I've done a lot of the labor myself. I kind of feel like that, um, cost is a little bit kind of. It's optional. It's an optional cost. Um, if you wanted to do what I'm doing now, that three and a half grand, I mean, it saved me a lot of hassle. Um, it saved me doing certain jobs. But yeah, it's, it's in my opinion, it was well worth spending. And there's probably more to spend there as well. And moving swiftly on to the last bits. So yeah, we went through miscellaneous items, but some of the more expensive miscellaneous stuff that I didn't really specify, um, the likes of the cooker. The cooker was 700. I had to buy a new anchor. It was 300. Um, the self-steering wind vane I got, actually, we have had a very brief look at that in, the, in a previous video. I only paid 250 euro for that. Um, now it needs some work, it needs some modification to make it fit onto the boat, but new they're about three to four thousand euro and yeah, that was a big saving. So other than that, um, I've gone through the vast majority of what I've actually spent. So the grand total of that, again, Comment, if you haven't commented below on how much you think it's going to cost all in, I know I've gone through specifics, but I haven't gone through exact costs. Um, I've gone through rough costs. Just comment what you think it's all cost down below and come back. So quick recap, eight grand on the hull, another uh, nine grand on miscellaneous items, two and a half, or just, just over two grand on paint, just under four grand on rigging, insulation, just over a grand, timber, just under four grand, Sales just under a grand, heating just under a grand, electrics just under a grand, plumbing half a grand, and labor two to three, well, three to four grand. So, yeah, the grand total of the vote has been 34 grand. 
So I've paid 34,000 to have an extremely clean steel hull. I would say 60% fitted out now. I'd say we're about 60% of the way there. Uh, some would say less, some would say more, but I feel comfortable at the, I think we're at the 60% mark now. Um, and I think, but I don't think it's the 60% mark of cost. I actually think there's another, I would say 15 to 20 grand to spend to have a boat fully ready to go offshore and stuff like that. Maybe a little more if I'm gonna go for new sails and things like that, or a new uh, inner force day, sail for the inner force day. But yeah, for the most part, um, 34 grand has got me a pretty sweet boat. And I'm pretty proud of that. Um, I'm interested to see if people think that's more or less than what they thought. But I think in, a, in the next video I'm planning to do, I'm gonna go through boats that you could actually buy. So for around 50 grand and can you can you buy a boat like this for 50 grand first and can you and how much would it cost to buy a fully prepared boat if we can't find one 50 grand let's see what it costs to buy a fully prepared offshore steel cruising yacht all ready to go and we'll see if we match up so this has been a pretty interesting video for me to make i knew the cost already in my head because i've been tracking it but I haven't told anyone really, except close friends, how much this has cost. So potentially telling 10 to 20,000 people, if that many watch this video, a little bit daunting. So um, go easy on me if this isn't exactly what you thought it would be. The last thing, do I regret it? Absolutely not. Would I do it again? Probably not. Um, the thing that you kind of, the hidden, or the, hidden, the hidden value here is, if you think about how much I've actually learned and gained from doing this project, I've made incredible new friends all over the world. I've learned skills that I never really did a lot of wiring before this project or any woodwork at all and only a little bit of metalwork um, and design and I've managed to do a huge amount of that in two years and build experience on that you cannot put a value on that that is what absolutely priceless the skills I've learned um, the summer we spent sailing instead of saving for to buy a boat that we didn't we didn't have yet another priceless experience of three months of sailing with um, with all my friends you can't you can't put money on that either the youtube audience and and the youtube channel we've built us together you and you and me um has been awesome as well and genuinely do not regret it i'm not sure i'd do it again even though i do say sometimes i'd love to do another one down the line but yeah let's get through this one first and see if we don't lose our mind first so again thanks for watching and if you haven't um subscribed obviously subscribe if you're new subscribe uh, go back and watch some of the old videos skip through them just so you can get up to date um, we've achieved an incredible amount in two less than two years uh, the february is the two-year anniversary so we'll, we'll do another video for that but so for fear of waffling on i'm gonna leave you guys go and i will catch you in the next video where we're going to be doing more wiring